Good evening. Um, let me welcome you first to this uh, this, web this webinar uh, about studying Chinese uh, at SOAS, uh, and thank you all for having taken the time uh, to be with us here today. Um, my name is Alan Cummings. Uh, I'm the admissions tutor uh, for our BA Chinese uh, and Tibetan undergraduate degrees uh, this year, um, and I'm here to I'm here today to give you a, a short talk to introduce the kind of degrees that we offer at SOAS. Uh, and to give you a little bit of a sense of what studying uh, Chinese at SOAS uh, is like. Uh, I'm sure that some of you will have uh, some questions uh, about, the, about the degree uh, or about studying at SOAS uh, in general, um, but please save, save those questions uh, for the end. Uh, if you do have questions, just type them uh, into the chat bar uh, and then I will, I, will, I will answer those questions. Uh, I'll, I'll leave some time at the end to answer those questions. Um, so the first thing is, um, you know, why should you why should you come to SARS? Um, I always say that academics make uh, hopeless salespeople, um, but there are a few things uh, that I could I could point to that I think um, to give you a sense of of why SARS would be a great place to to come to study uh, Chinese. Um, the first is that SARS offers a really amazing concentration uh, of knowledge uh, and expertise on the languages and cultures of Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. Um, there's nowhere else in the world that has as many specialists, um, over 350 of us, uh, in the languages, and the art, the politics, music, economics, politics, and history uh, of these really important regions. Um, in, the China, in the China section, in the East Asia department, uh, we have, uh, at, mo at the moment, six full-time uh, lecturers who specialize in Chinese philology, uh, in Chinese film, uh, in modern and pre-modern literature, uh, in underground theater, uh, and in linguistics. Um, we also have five uh, full-time uh, language teachers uh, teaching, teaching different aspects of, of Chinese language. In addition, there are, are many other academics involved in the study of China uh, in other departments around SOAS. Uh, in economics, for example, uh, in history, uh, in religions, uh, in art and archaeology. Um, so if you come to SOAS, you have a really amazing opportunity uh, to take uh, modules and study with some of the major scholars uh, in their respective fields. Um, Asian studies at SOAS has been recognized in the last uh, research assessment exercise as being uh, the preeminent institution uh, in the country for Asian studies. Um, so by coming here, you're really getting a, an excellent chance to, to, to study uh, with people who are working at the forefront of their, of their different disciplines, who are expanding our understanding uh, of ancient uh, and contemporary China and its changing place uh, in the world. Another thing I would, I would point to uh, is the SAMAS Library. Um, maybe that's, that's not going to be the first thing you think about when you're you know, trying to think about which university you want to go to to, to study. Um, but as you progress uh, in your degree, <coughs> as your ability to read uh, Chinese uh, increases, you will find that the SOAS Library has a, has a really amazing uh, selection of Chinese books and academic journals and, and newspapers, uh, things which are fun to read, but things which will also be absolutely vital uh, for your research and for your, your understanding uh, of China. Uh, so as you move further through your degree, uh, the SOAS Library is really a resource that you come to appreciate uh, more and more. Um, it really is one of the best uh, libraries in, in the country. It's really a unique resource, um, a unique re resource even in Europe. Um, and we have a, a vast range of works uh, in Chinese, but also uh, in English uh, and other languages on China-related topics on almost anything you, you would think of wanting to investigate. Um, the final thing I'd, I'd point to um, is, the, is the atmosphere of SOAS and its location. Um, you know, if you've if you've come here uh, on an open day, or you've you you you've, you've been uh, to, to see where we are, um, you you will notice that SOAS is not a particularly big uh, institution. You know, we just have a few thousand students, um, but we are an intensely international uh, university. We have students at SOAS from uh, over 130 different countries. Um, somewhere between 45 and 50 percent of our student body uh, is from outside uh, the UK. Um, this means that you have, when you come to SOAS, you have a really wonderful opportunity to meet and make friends uh, with people from all sorts of different cultures and people who are involved in the study of all sorts of really interesting, sometimes bizarre uh, things. 
Um, so I should I should move on and, and say a little bit um, about uh, the degree programs uh, that, that we offer. Um, so we currently offer two different types uh, of degrees at undergraduate level. Um, and if you look on the you, you, if you look on the website, you can see that we have our um, BA Chinese Modern and Classical, um, and we have uh, BA Chinese Studies. And these are the main undergraduate degrees that that we offer. Um, just to explain how those those degrees are are different, um, BA Chinese. Um, is a is a four year degree. Um, you spend uh, one year of that, your second year, uh, studying uh, at a university in Beijing, uh, Beijing Normal uh, University. Um, the BA Chinese Studies um, degree, on the other hand, is a three year degree. Um, so it's a three year degree because it does not have uh, that uh, that year abroad. Um, with both of those degrees, uh, it is possible to study them either as a, as a single subject uh, degree or as a joint degree. So you can combine them with some of the other subjects that, uh, that SAS offers. Um, and if you go onto the website, uh, you'll be able to see uh, a, big, uh, a big list of the types of, uh, of subjects that you can combine um, with, uh, with BA Chinese. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's development studies, there's economics, there's English, uh, history, history of art and archaeology, Indonesian, international relations, Japanese studies, Korean studies, law, linguistics, music, politics, social anthropology, religions, uh, Tibetan uh, and, world, uh, and world philosophies. Um, so that's that, that that's the range of, of degrees that we that we offer. Uh, if anybody here is is interested uh, in Tibetan, um, we do have a, a BA Tibetan degree, um, but it's it's only available uh, as a as a joint degree. Um, most of the subjects that you can combine uh, Tibetan with uh, will turn it into a three year degree, uh, unless you combine it with uh, with Chinese, in which case uh, it will become. Uh, a four-year uh, degree. Um, I should I should say um, a little bit uh, about another th another aspect about how these two degrees uh, are different, um, and that is on the on the three-year degree uh, there is a there's a greater focus uh, upon uh, non-language courses, so discipline courses, so courses which are about uh, Chinese literature or Chinese film uh, or Chinese history. Um, whereas on BA Chinese, uh, there is a, there's a greater focus on the acquisition of the language. Uh, so you spend a far greater amount of time trying to get your language, your Chinese language, your Mandarin up to the, uh, up to the highest point, um, to the highest level of proficiency um, that you can. Um, to give you a, a little bit of a, a sense of what, of what studying uh, Chinese at SOAS might be like, um, I'll, say a, I'll say a few things now about, about structure and about course choices. Um, each year you're at SOAS, uh, you're required to uh, take 120 credits uh, each year. Um, some of these will be chosen for you, so there will be uh, compulsory uh, modules. Uh, others you'll be able to choose uh, for yourself. Um, and as you kind of progress upwards, you know, into the third and fourth year, you have more choice. Uh, there will be there will be more uh, optional modules that, that you can uh, that you can choose from. Um, in your first year, though, um, your first if you're studying on BA Chinese, um, you will spend uh, that uh, that first year about half your time uh, will be spent working on on language. Um, so there's a, an elementary modern Chinese uh, language module uh, that you will that you will take. Um, which aims to teach you your know, basic speaking, listening, reading, writing, uh, and translation. Um, and on that module, uh, you're spending, at the moment, it's, it's, it's 13 hours a week um, that you spend studying uh, grammar and conversation classes and writing classes uh, and so on. Um, the other modules uh, that you will take, uh, there will be a, a history, an introduction to the history of East Asia module uh, that you will take. Um, this is this is a new curriculum uh, from uh, from next year, um, and that module it kind of does what it says on the tin. So you you study the history of China, but you study that history of China alongside the histories of uh, of Korea uh, and Japan. Um, so it, it's there to kind of give you a sense about the about the interconnections, the commonalities, the different exchanges, the differences uh, between 
uh, those states uh, throughout history and, and right up to uh, right up to the contemporary uh, period. Uh, but as I said, um, about half your time, so about half the modules you take in first year uh, will be will be language modules. Um, and I do have to kind of give you one word of warning here, and that is. For every hour that you are that you spend in a language class, um, our language teachers say that you need to spend maybe two or maybe three uh, hours um, revising, um, self-studying, uh, so doing your homework, uh, memorizing characters, practicing characters, learning new vocab, preparing for tests, and so on and so forth. Um, so the reason why I, I always say this at this point is, you know, Chinese is. Is not a different. Is not an easy language uh, to learn, um, and to begin with, uh, at least it does require a serious commitment uh, of time uh, and effort. Um, so you need to think, okay, in my first year, my third year, my second year, and third year, you know, I, I'll be working maybe 30 hours a week, maybe more than that, um, just on the language, just trying to you know to get your your reading and your writing and your listening and your speaking skills up to the level where you where you where you want to go. Um, our language teachers, our Chinese language teachers, uh, are wonderful. They're really warm, very helpful. Um, you know, they're, they're constantly you know, helping you to do the best that you can do. Uh, but they they need that you uh, put in uh, the time uh, and, and the effort. Um, and if you do so, then you will you will be you'll be very much uh, rewarded. Um, it's a very rigorous course. You know, we we aim to get you up to um, a level of reading and writing and speaking and listening. Um, where you can where you can function um, in China, where you can where you can read newspapers, where you can read literary texts, and you can read academic texts. Um, so it means that over the four years that you're at SOAS uh, on that BA Chinese degree, uh, you will have to be highly committed uh, to the study uh, of language, and that that sense of commitment and enthusiasm for China is something that we we definitely look for um, in the applications. Um, as you as you move further uh, through the through the program, as I said before, your uh, your second year uh, is spent uh, abroad, uh, studying at, at Beijing Normal uh, University. Um, as you kind of go there, there you're mostly studying Chinese language. Um, it's a fairly uh, intensive course. Um, when you come back in your in your third and, and fourth year, um, the modules will again be divided up, kind of half language modules and then half what we call discipline uh, modules, so modules which are about Chinese history or post-war society, uh, modern classical uh, literature, classical language, uh, Chinese linguistics. There's there's a full list of all of the of, of the modules that we have available uh, on the website. Um, and as you progress through 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 the degree. Um, your later years become much more about using your language skills. Um, you know, you will have acquired that kind of the basic grammar and vocabulary in the earlier years, but the, the later years are more about applying um, the language skills that you have developed. So you start reading you know, Chinese historical texts, or you start reading modern or pre-modern uh, literary texts uh, in their original versions. So you're you're beginning to kind of puzzle out uh, you know, how Chinese is is working. You're beginning to use real life um, materials. Um, so that's that that's the basic structure of the degree. If you want to see more detail on that, um, go on to the go on to the website. Um, if you if you if you roll down, you can um, you can see the the structure uh, for the for the for the for the degree where it kind of lays out uh, each year uh, which which modules you'll you'll be taking. Uh, if you click through on each of those, you can you can get uh, an insight uh, into the into the content uh, of e of each of those modules. Um, you get you be able to learn about the assessment, um, you know, what percentage is exam versus what percentage is, is continuous assessment or essays and so on. Um, so there's there's lots and lots of detail uh, on the on the website. Um, if you if you want to look through these through these modules, you'll probably also see that we we do offer some uh, additional uh, language uh, courses as well. So it's possible uh, to study uh, Hokkien, uh, for example. Uh, or it is possible to study Cantonese. Um, so there are, there are additional kind of Chinese languages that, that you can learn uh, while you're uh, while you're here. Um, 
I should I should say a couple of things about about the the year abroad. Um, as I say, the, that year abroad uh, is uh, is compulsory uh, for students who are who are on the four year degree. Um, you spend one year uh, studying uh, in in Beijing uh, in your second year, and you spend it uh, at, at the moment. Every all of the students go to Beijing uh, Normal uh, University. Um, so that year abroad uh, is compulsory. So that's definitely worth worth thinking about you know, when you're choosing whether to go for um, Japanese studies or whether you're uh, or whether you're choosing uh, or Chinese studies or whether you're choosing to go with uh, with with uh, with BA Chinese. Um, it's a, it's of course it's a fantastic opportunity you know to go and live uh, and study uh, in China for a year allows you to improve your language skills and your understanding uh, of the uh, of the of of the culture. Um, of course, you'll have lots of wonderful experiences uh, while you're there. The chance to, um, you know, to meet and make friends, um, and you know, lots, lots of different things that you will um, experience while you're um, while you're there. Um, I know that, that lots of people often ask about uh, entry uh, requirements, um, and you know, really, when I come to to look at your applications. There are really three things that, that, I, that I look for, particularly in the in the in the personal statement, um, and those three those three things are: Do you have the ability to handle uh, the language uh, side of the of of, of the degree? Um, so, have you studied uh, language before? That's very important. Um, if you've studied language at GCSE, or if you've studied at a, at a level, uh, or if you've studied language in some other kind of context, if you've taken uh, a short course somewhere, or you've taken evening lessons, or, or whatever it is, um, please tell us about that because we, we we want to know that you have a very good idea of what studying language involves. Um, you know, some people, you know, they have this idea that you know, if, if you haven't studied language before, you think it's kind of a, a magical process where you just sit in a language classroom. Uh, and somehow magically the ability to speak it will appear in your brain. Uh, those of you who have studied language, you know that that isn't true, that you need to put a lot of effort into building up your vocabulary, uh, in learning how to learning how to read and write, um, and it's something that, that requires a, you know, a constant and consistent uh, effort to become, to become good at. Um, the other thing I, I, I like to see um, is, you know, do you have the ability to handle the academic demands of the course? Um, you know, lots of the modules uh, that, that you take will be about Chinese literature, about Chinese Chinese history. Um, so that's that really has to do with your with, with your grades. Um, and finally, the, the thing that we want to see is some sort of passion uh, or enthusiasm uh, for studying China uh, in an academic context. Um, so. Tell us why. You know, tell us why you're interested in China. Tell us what kind of books you've been reading about China. Tell us what you thought about them. Um, if you, you know, if, the reason why we ask to see that passion or enthusiasm um, is that you know, if you study a language, um, sometimes it will be, it will feel wonderful. It will feel easy. Uh, vocabulary will just kind of appear in your brain, and you'll be able to remember it easily. Uh, characters will stick, um, and then there will be other times where it will feel Difficult. Uh, there will be times where you're having to write out a character 50 times or 100 times, and it's just not getting into your brain. Uh, it's just not registering with you. Um, so there will be times when it feels a bit depressing uh, to study language. Um, and at those times, you know, you need to have something within you, something that when you ask that, that question, why did I choose to do Chinese? You've got to have some answer for yourself. Um, so that's that's why we like to see that. Uh, that passion uh, or that uh, enthusiasm. Um, okay, I think that that's about um, all that I that I that I wanted uh, to say. Um, do you have any any questions? You know, if you have a question, feel free to just type it into the into the chat bar, and I am happy to take those questions now.
Okay, so Lucien has just asked about the uh, the syllabus for the for the year abroad. Um, when you're in, in Beijing, uh, it's essentially, it's, it's mostly Chinese language that you will spend uh, most of your time studying. Um, at the moment, we also have a, a project, a sinological project that we ask you to do while you're on the year abroad. Um, and that is finding out about some aspect of China that, that interests you. And it's to do with writing a, a fairly lengthy um, essay on that. Uh, but in terms of the you know, the formal classes that you have at, at Beijing Normal, uh, they're mostly uh, language classes. Uh, Laura has asked about uh, classical Chinese. Um, you know, we we, we believe that um, classical and, and modern they they are all part of the of the same spectrum. Um, at the moment, we have um, there's, there's a 30 credit uh, classical uh, Chinese course that, that you that students take in the uh, in the first year. Um, that, that module is currently under revision, um, so we think it will probably be reduced to a, a 15 uh, credit module. Uh, but there will still be um, a compulsory uh, classical Chinese uh, element that you that you do as as part of the uh, as part of the degree. Um, you know, China has such a, such a long and fascinating history, um, and learning classical it opens up that that history for you. Um, you just don't want to be focusing just on kind of really recent uh, texts. So classical, you know, getting some classical under your belt, it's, it's going to provide you a really firm foundation. It's going to open up uh, that vast, fascinating history for you. Uh, Mario has asked, uh, what are the differences between the, th the three and four year uh, degrees in terms of what you, of what you study and what kind of degree uh, you get? Um, the major difference is really the amount of language uh, that you're studying. Um, so the four year degree, um, you're spending about half your time on language and you have the year abroad. Um, so the level of Chinese language that you will come out with at the end of that degree uh, is going to be considerably higher um, than uh, the amount of than, than the level that you'll be able to reach uh, on BA Chinese studies. Uh, so in BA Chinese studies, um, you're you're spending um, three or four hours per week uh, on language. So a quarter uh, of your modules are, are language modules, and your other modules then uh, will be will be kind of uh, there'll be a, a broader range of disciplinary modules that you can take. Um, so it's it's really you know, how much time do you want to put into the language and how good do you want your your Mandarin to be at, at the end of the degree? Uh, if you want it to be as good as, as it can be, then choose the four year. Um, if you're kind of less interested in language and more interested in other elements, uh, then choose uh, BA Chinese studies. Um, Let's see. So Lucien has also asked, is it possible to combine Chinese with another subject later uh, in our studies, even if we have enrolled for uh, Chinese only? Um, yes, that there are there are moments where you can you can transfer to a joint degree. Uh, there are moments when it's it's easier to do that than than others. For example, you know, in first year when you first arrive, the first couple of weeks, if you suddenly decide oh, I wanted to do Chinese in history, it's then possible to, to ask the history department if they will accept you on a joint degree. Um, so it's, it's, it's easy enough to do it at that point. Obviously, once you get further into the term, you will have missed uh, too many lectures for that to happen. So degree transfer can only really happen um, at, the, uh, at, at, at the beginning uh, of, a, of a year. Um, later on, it would still be possible um, to switch to a joint degree. But for example, on those four-year degrees, you need to take a minimum of, let's see, 150 credits, I think you have to take in your second subject. Um, so it would still be possible to, to transfer at the start of your third year. And then you would need to take 60 credits, and then you would need to take 90 credits um, in the second subject in the in the final year. So it, it it is, it is possible to do that with, with, with most of the degrees, but if you are thinking about, about a joint degree, it would be better to think about it uh, really from the start or, or at the start of your, uh, at your first year. 
Um, Eleanor asked about uh, accommodation uh, at Beijing Normal. Um, yeah, mo most students are staying uh, in university uh, accommodation there. Um, work experience, um, that, that is something that, that can vary. It depends upon uh, the Chinese government and what they want to allow holders of, of student visas to, to do. Uh, in the past, it has been possible for, for people to, to work a little bit, uh, a little bit of time uh, each week. Um, but that is is something that that we that we don't have uh, that, that we don't have control over. Um, there are also, of course, less formal forms of work that people do when they're in China. Um, you know, you can you can exchange conversation lessons with people. Um, there 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 are various things you can uh, you, you can do to earn a little bit of uh, a little bit of money. Um, Cherry has what she calls a, a really random question about whether there's anything related to, to Kung Fu uh, in the curriculum uh, or any Kung Fu clubs. Um, so as does have uh, quite a few martial arts clubs. Um, if you look on, if you look up the SOAS Student Union um, and if you look under their societies, uh, you'll be able to see a full list of all of the all of the different student societies. Uh, honestly, I have no idea if there is a Kung Fu one, but I know there is Karate and there is uh, Taekwondo and there's, there's different uh, martial arts. Um, in the curriculum, um, I don't think there's any module that deals directly uh, with that, but I think it's touched on in, uh, you know, we have cinema modules. Um, so I think some of that material is, is, is touched on there. Uh, yeah, so Laura has asked about uh, do, do our modules also cover Taiwanese literature and culture? Um, if you if you look on the on the list of uh, of modules that that are available, uh, we do have some some modules uh, on on Taiwanese cinema. Uh, for example, uh, we have uh, a Hokkien uh, language module, uh, so you can learn you know, uh, Taiwanese. Um, there, there's also we also have a, a specialist uh, in. Uh, in Taiwanese politics, who works in the politics uh, department. Um, so you may be able to take some some modules uh, in the politics department on on Chinese uh, politics, if that if that grabs you. Uh, Lucien asked about uh, the, what the majority of graduates uh, go on go on to do. Um, it's you know in, in East Asia the East Asia department as a whole it's really it's a really complicated picture. Um, so we have we always have graduates who who want to go and work uh, in China uh, or in Taiwan uh, maybe, uh, and some of those will go to to work with with uh, China, Chinese or Taiwanese companies. Um, some will work with uh, with Western companies that are interested in working in China. Um, there are people who go on to, to teach. There are people who go on to work in, in industry or, or in media. Um, there are some people, yes, who go on who are interested in taking a, an MA or maybe a, a PhD. So it's 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 a really it's it's a really difficult picture. Uh, it's a really difficult one in which to. Uh, to generalize because people go on to do such a, a vast array of, of different things. Um, and obviously you know, the, the degree is, is preparing you on the one hand, it's giving you those, those language skills that, that you can use uh, to work in, in China or, or in a Chinese context. Um, but we're also giving you lots of transferable skills that have to do with writing, that have to do with research, that have to do with, with thinking. Um, and these are skills that you can use in all sorts of all sorts of different areas. Um, so, so not just not just in China um, or something directly related uh, to China. So it's yeah, it, it's it's a very it's a very complex uh, picture. We do have a, a list on, on the website of some of the of some of the recent destinations uh, that our students have have gone to, and there's some recent kind of job titles that people have gone into. Uh, so if you if you want, you can you can check that out. And see some of the some of the different areas that people have gone into. Okay, I think we're we're just about uh, at time. So thank you uh, all for uh, for coming to to join us uh, this evening. Um, if there's anything I haven't covered or anything you really want to know about that you just uh, you just thought of now or you think of later, 
um, please feel free to, to drop me an email. Uh, my email is ac50 at soas.ac.uk. It's also on the website. Um, so if you've got any questions, please feel to please feel free to let us know. And we hope to see applications from you very soon. Thank you.